I'm normally an index fund guy, but I know at times that everyone has access to their favorite index fund. So in the spirit of always investing, let me share with you 10 best ETFs, exchange traded funds for ultimate wealth building. And hi, if you're new to the channel, my name is Tay from Financial Tortoise, where we learn to grow our wealth slow and steady. All right, I'm going to cover ETFs by companies. So let's start out with my personal favorite, Vanguard. With about $7.7 .7 trillion in global assets under management, it is the largest provider of mutual funds and the second largest provider of ETFs in the world. And in my personal opinion, it is also the boringest. Vanguard was founded on the principle of providing low cost, broad market investing for individuals, and it will likely stay that way in our lifetime. Don't expect Vanguard to do anything exciting when it comes to financial products. So to kick it off, the number one best ETF for ultimate wealth building, the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF, VTI. The second cousin to my favorite index fund, the Vanguard Total Market Index Fund, VTSAX. Having started in 2001, it has an excellent expense ratio of 0.03% and assets under management of approximately $319 billion. The fund seeks to track the performance of the CRSP US Total Market Index, probably the most comprehensive reflection of the US stock market. It includes almost 4,000 companies across mega, large, small, and micro capitalization and covers nearly 100% of the US investable equity market. Thus, at the time of this video, VTI represents more than 3,800 US companies. The fund also boasts a great turnover rate of 3.4%. The turnover rate is a rate in which buying and selling occurs within a fund. For actively managed funds, it reflects how often a fund manager decides to sell off underlying investments and add new ones to the fund. So higher the percentage, the more frequently a fund's assets turn over. For context, if a fund has a turnover rate of 50%, not an uncommon number for actively managed funds, this means that half of his investments were sold in the previous 12 months. So you might be asking, what is a good turnover rate? For a broad market passively managed funds like VTI, the turnover rate should be around or less than 5%. Anything higher could suggest that the fund is being mismanaged. Just to give you a heads up, pretty much all the ETFs I'm going to cover in this video have really great turnover rates. No more than 5%, many as low as 2%. Before we move on to the next best ETF, let's talk about performance. Of course, note that past performance is not a good indicator of future performance, so we shouldn't get too tied to this number, but we'll use it as a way to compare against all other funds we'll cover in this video. The 10-year performance of VTI is 11.22%, which translates to if you had invested $10,000 10 years ago into VTI, it would have grown close to $29,000 today. Moving on, the number two best ETF for ultimate wealth building, the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, also known as VOO. Having started in 2010, it also boasts an excellent expense ratio of 0.03% and assets under management of approximately $340 billion. The fund invests in stocks in the S&P 500 index, probably the most widely followed index in the world, representing the 500 largest US companies, weighed by the value of their market capitalization. At the time of this video, it holds exactly 507 stocks. Now, how different is this from VTI? Not that much actually. Despite it owning 500 stocks versus VTI's close to 4,000 stocks, because of market cap, VOO represents about 80 to 85% of market value of all US stocks. And the weight within the index automatically adjusts based on the changing stock prices. For example, let's say that Apple, currently the largest company in the world, falls from grace and drops the 10th largest. In that case, the index and therefore VOO will automatically adjust its representation of Apple to be a smaller portion of the pie. VOO also boasts a great turnover rate of 2.1% and the 10-year performance of VOO is 11.86%. Slightly higher than VTI's 11.86%. 0.22%, due to the fact that large companies perform better than smaller companies that are also included in VTI. But no one can predict if this will or will not continue in the future. From an investment perspective, if you had invested $10,000 10 years ago into VOO, it would have grown to little over $30,000, three times its original investment. The number three best ETF for ultimate wealth building, the Vanguard Total Stock ETF, also known as VT. It started in 2008, has a slightly higher expense ratio of 0.07%, and has has assets under management of approximately $29 billion. All right, so what's so special about this ETF? Let's try to understand the index. VT seeks to track the performance of the FTSE Global All Cap Index, which covers both well-established and still developing markets. Essentially, instead of just investing in US stocks like VTI or VOO, 
it invests in both US and foreign markets. Therefore, it holds close to 10,000 stocks. This is how it breaks down further. 64% in North America, about 10% in emerging markets, 16% in Europe, and 11% in Pacific. It not only owns all the big American companies like Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon, but it also holds a good chunk of international companies. Companies like Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, a Taiwanese semiconductor manufacturing design company, Samsung, a South Korean major appliances and consumer electronics corporation, and AstraZeneca, a UK based pharmaceutical and biotech company. VT will be ideal for someone who wants to diversify their holdings beyond just US companies, but don't want to hold a separate international fund. VT has a great low turnover rate of 4.3% and its 10 year performance is 7.7%. Lower than compared to VTI and VOO, given it includes a good percentage of international stocks, who didn't perform as well as US companies the past 10 years. But in the theme of we don't know what the future holds, this could quickly change as it has done several times in the past. From an investment perspective, if you had invested $10,000 10 years ago into VT, it would have grown to a little over $20,000 today. Two times its original investment. Real quick, there are a lot of funds I'm covering in this video and it's hard to keep track of all of them. So in order to make the process of learning about these funds easier, I created a free PDF downloadable that lists all the funds I'm covering in this video with respective details. Think of it as a quick guide you can reference when you're reviewing your own fund options. If you'd like a free copy of this PDF, go to the link I'll have in the description below. All right, with that said, let's get back to the video. With the best Vanguard ETFs cover, let's move on to ETF funds by BlackRock. A little background about BlackRock. It is a giant in the investment world. It is not only the world's largest asset manager with $9.42 trillion in assets under management, but is also the world's largest provider of exchange traded funds, mostly represented by the iShares collection. All right, let's get into the specific ETFs. The number four best ETF for ultimate wealth building. The iShares Core S&P Total US Stock Market ETF also known as ITOT. It started in 2004 and like VTI and VOO, has an excellent expense ratio of 0.03% and assets under management of approximately $44 billion. ITOT seeks to track the performance of the S&P Total Market Index, TMI, an index run by the S&P Dow Jones and designed to track the broad equity market, including large, mid, small, and micro cap stocks. At the time of this video, this fund represents about 2,800 stocks. If you recall the total number of stocks at VTI, the Vanguard total stock market ETF held was close to 4,000. Why the big difference? 4,000 versus 2,800 seems like a lot. But remember that all stocks represented in these ETFs are represented based on market cap. Bigger the company, bigger the representation. Smaller the company, smaller the representation. Thus, most of the companies excluded from ITOT compared to VTI are super small companies, making the two indexes pretty much the same from performance perspective. ITOT has a low turnover rate of 4% and its 10-year performance is 11.32%. VTI 10-year performance, if you recall earlier, was 11.22%. So we're talking about a 0.1% difference. From an investment perspective, if you had invested $10,000 10 years ago into ITOT, it would have grown close to $30,000 today, a few hundred dollars more than VTI. If iShares Core S&P Total US Stock Market ETF is offered as an option in your 401k or your other retirement plans, it will be an excellent low cost option to invest in the market. All right, staying with the BlackRock and iShares collection, moving on. The number five best ETF for ultimate wealth building the iShares Core S&P 500 ETF, IVV. It started in 2000, has an excellent expense ratio of 0.03%, and assets under management of approximately $347 billion. IVV is pretty much the same as Vanguard's VOO. It tracks the same S&P 500 index, the 500 largest US companies. At the time of this video, it has exactly 503 stocks. It also has an excellent turnover rate of 3%, and its 10-year performance is 11.87%. If you recall, VOO's 10-year performance was 11.86%. So we're talking about a 0.01% difference. And similar to VOO, if you had invested $10,000 10 years ago into IVV, it would have grown to a little over $30,000 today. Choosing IVV over VO or ITOT is all based on what you have available and personal preference. I'm a Vanguard guy, but if you really like BlackRock, then go with IVV as your core S&P 500 large cap fund holding. In the long run, what's going to make a difference in your net worth is in which fund you choose as your core wealth building tool, but how much you put in and for how long. All right, before we move from BlackRock, let me share with you one more iShares fund you might want to have in your back pocket. The number six best ETF for ultimate wealth building the iShares Morningstar US Equity ETF, aka ILCB. It started in 2004 
also has a great expense ratio of 0.03%, but this one is pretty small compared to the other two ETFs we just covered. Only $754 million in assets under management. If you have access to either the iShares Core S&P Total US Stock Market ETF or the iShares Core S&P 500 ETF, I wouldn't pick ILCB, but it's good to know that it's there. ILCB seeks to track the investment results of an index composed of large and mid-cap US equities. More specifically, as the name states, the Morningstar US Large Mid-Cap Index. Comprehensive depiction of the performance and fundamental characteristics of the large and mid-cap segments of the US equities market. Large cap refers to a company with a market capitalization value of more than $10 billion. You can pretty much think of most of the companies within the S&P 500 index. And mid-cap companies are ones with market cap between $2 billion and $10 billion. Some examples of mid-cap companies include the Zillow Group, a tech real estate marketplace company, Sirius XM, a broadcasting corporation, and DaVita, a dialysis company. Big companies, but not giants like Apple or Google. And ILCB includes a good number of them, thus at the time of this video, holding approximately 670 stocks. 500 big companies, plus a couple hundred so-called mid-cap companies. ILCB has a low turnover rate of 4%, and its 10-year performance is 11.12%. Slightly lower than total market and the S&P 500 ETFs. From an investment perspective, if you had invested $10,000 10 years ago into ILCB, it would have grown close to $29,000 today. Again, this wouldn't be my first choice if I had to choose from the iShare funds, but it's good to know that it exists given that the three that we just covered have one of the lowest expense ratio in the iShare group. All right, with BlackRock ETFs out of the way, let's get into the State Street funds. State Street, along with BlackRock and Vanguard, is considered to be one of the big three index fund managers that dominate corporate America. The third biggest ETF provider on the US stock market to be exact. It also holds the title of holding the world's largest ETF, SPY, which also happens to be the very first exchange traded fund listed here in the US. But more about them in a bit. The number seven best ETF for ultimate wealth building, the SPDR Portfolio S&P 500 ETF, SPLG. It started in 2005 and has the industry's lowest expense ratio of all large cap blend S&P 500 offerings with an expense ratio of whopping 0.02%. This one is fresh off the press given it was recently updated in August of 2023 from 0.03%. It also has assets under management of approximately $19 billion. And SPLG, pretty much the same as Vanguard's VOO and BlackRock's IVV, tracks the performance of the S&P 500 index, 504 stocks represented at the time of this video. It has a great low turnover rate of 2%, and its 10-year performance is 11.76%. Slightly lower than VOO's 11.86% and IVV's 11.87% but not enough to make much of a difference. From an investment perspective, if you had invested $10,000 10 years ago into SPLG, it would have grown to over $30,000 today. SPLG, VOO, and IVV are pretty much all the same, except for who they're managed by. So if you're looking for a good S&P 500 ETF, you can't go wrong with any one of them. Before I move on to the next State Street ETF, I do want to highlight an honorable mention. The SPDR S&P 500 ETF, aka SPY. With $400 billion assets under management, it is technically the world's largest ETF, much in part due to the fact that SPY was the very first exchange traded fund listed here in the US, January of 1993. It also tracks the S&P 500 index, pretty much the same 10-year performance as SPLG at 11.77%, and has an excellent low turnover rate of 2%. However, it has a relatively high expense ratio of 0.0945%. My honest opinion is that while SPY is a good ETF overall, the higher expense ratio compared to similar S&P 500 ETFs, State Street's SPLG, Vanguard's VOO, and iShares IVV gives me a pause. However, if this is the only option available in your 401k or other retirement plans, it will definitely be better than choosing an actively managed fund. The number eight best ETF for ultimate wealth building, the SPDR Portfolio S&P, 1500 Composite Stock ETF, aka SPTM. It started in 2000, also has an excellent expense ratio of 0.03%, and assets under management of approximately $6.4 billion. It's State Street's best ETF if you want something close to a total market exposure. The SPTM aims to track the investment results of the S&P Composite 1500 Index, an index that is designed to measure the performance of large, mid, and small cap segments of the US equities market. Essentially, as the name states, the 1500 biggest US companies. Not as comprehensive as Vanguard's VTI, or BlackRock's ITOT, but it still represents approximately 90% of the investable US equity market. At the time of this video, it holds approximately 1,500 stocks. It has a great low turnover rate of 2%, 
and its 10-year performance is 11.47%. Compared to Vanguard's VTI, which has a 10-year performance of 11.22%, and BlackRock's ITOT, which has a 10-year performance of 11.32%, it is slightly better. Probably due to the fact that small cap and micro small cap stocks didn't perform as well as large companies the past 10 years. From an investment perspective, if you had invested $10,000 10 years ago into SPTM, it would have grown close to $30,000 today. If your options are limited to State Street, and you want greater exposure to the market than just the S&P 500, SPTM is a great option. Let's move on to some ETF options provided by Charles Schwab, an American multinational financial services company, at the time of this video, considered the 10th largest bank in the US. The number nine best ETF for ultimate wealth building, Schwab US Broad Market ETF, also known as SCHB. It started in 2009, also has an excellent expense ratio of 0.03% and assets under management of approximately $22.5 billion. SCHB aims to track the investment results of the Dow Jones US Broad Stock Market Index, an index that follows the 2,500 largest publicly traded companies in the US. Thus, at the time of this video, SCHB represents close to 2,500 stocks. From a total number of companies followed perspective, less companies than Vanguard's VTI and BlackRock's ITOT, However, more than State Street's SPTM. But again, because of market cap, while the total number of companies differ, the difference in overall market representation is hardly noticeable, as you can tell by its returns. SCHP has a great low turnover rate of 3.6%, and its 10-year performance is 11.23%. Pretty much in line with Vanguard's VTI of 11.22%, and BlackRock's ITOT of 11.32%. From an investment perspective, if you had invested $10,000 10 years ago into SCHP, it would have appreciated close to $29,000 today. If you're invested with Charles Schwab and are looking for an ETF with a great exposure to the broad market, Schwab US Broad Market ETF is an excellent choice. The number 10 best ETF for ultimate wealth building, Schwab US Large Cap ETF, SCHX. It started in 2009, same as SCHB, also has an excellent expense ratio of 0.03% and assets under management of approximately $33 billion. SCHX aims to track the investment results of the Dow Jones US Large Cap Total Stock Market Index, an index that follows approximately 750 largest US companies. Thus, at the time of this video, SCHX represents close to 760 stocks. Think of all the companies represented by the S&P 500 index, plus a few hundred mid-cap companies. SCHX has a great low turnover rate of 3.8%, and its 10-year performance is 11.68%. From an investment perspective, if you had invested $10,000 10 years ago into SCHX, it would have grown to slightly over $30,000 today. If you're investing with Charles Schwab, and you're looking for something close to the S&P 500, the Schwab US Large Cap ETF would be an excellent choice. All right, that's a lot that we've covered so far, so thanks for staying with me. Again, there's a lot of funds I covered, and it's hard to keep track of all of them. So consider downloading my free PDF downloadable that lists all the funds I covered in this video with the respective details. Think of it as a quick guide you can reference when you're reviewing your own fund options. Go to the link I'll have in the description below to download your free copy. One major theme you might have noticed is that most of these funds are actually a lot more similar than they're different. All the funds are broadly diversified, representing at least 500 biggest US companies, many of them many more. For example, Vanguard's total stock market ETF VTI represents close to 4,000 stocks. For returns, all funds minus the Vanguard total world stock ETF VT has a 10-year performance of at least 11% a year. And from a cost perspective, minus VT, all have an excellent expense ratio of at most 0.03%. State Street's SPDR portfolio, S&P 500 ETF, SPLG, boasts an amazing low expense ratio of 0.02%. Now, that shouldn't be the reason why you choose SPLF over other ETFs, but it's always great to see investment firms competing with each other to provide the lowest possible cost. My honest perspective is that you can't go wrong with any of the funds that are reviewed in this video. That is, if you invest in them consistently over a long period of time. Thank you guys for watching. And the theme of best funds, if you'd like to know what to consider the best index funds in the market, please check out my video here. Until next time, all the best.